All right, uh, welcome to this uh, LudeTube video on <coughs> solving quadratic equations by factoring node, okay? So just as a, a refresher, in case you're not sure, a quadratic equation is an equation that has an x squared in it. This is a factored version of the quadrat uh, quadratic equation, and this is what we're going to do is we're going to factor them. So I'm going to show you kind of moving uh, forward here. If, if I actually showed this equation like this, it would be x squared minus x minus 12 equal to 0. And then I'd factor it, and I'd end up at x minus 4 x plus 3 because the factors of 12 that have a difference of 1 minus 1 are minus 4 and plus 3. So that is step has already been completed so I'm just kind of starting you off here and really I, I'll just erase that so it doesn't get in our way here. Now what we have here is a factored a, a quadratic equation okay and in this particular case what we have is we and all of them, when we get two binomials, is really this is like one number here. This represents a number, and this here represents a number. These are two different numbers that are being multiplied by each other, and they equal zero. And the only way that can happen is if one of these two numbers is zero. If you think about it, four times zero equals zero, eight times zero equals zero, 122 times zero equals zero. The only way we can get through multiplication, a zero is if one of these two values equals zero. So what we do is we look at these and say, what would make x minus 4 zero? So we say x minus 4 equals zero or x plus 3 equals zero. So we say one of those two things has to happen. And then it becomes quite uh, uh, apparent what the answer is here. And a lot of kids can just do this without writing these steps in. They'll simply write here, x will equal 4 because the minus 4 goes to the other side. Or they just simply recognize that by putting 4 in here, minus 4 will give me 0. Or the other potential answer is x plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, x could equal minus 3. And we have two answers. Now, quite often, you can write the answers like this in this format and say x equals 4 or x equals minus 3. But quite often, we write them like this as mathematicians. We write x equals 4 and then put a comma for minus 3 instead of writing or and writing x equals again. So it's just about saving a little writing. Um, and that's all it is. So let's go to another example where we actually have to do the factoring because this is kind of like already one step done for us. So here I look at 12 and I say factors of 12 that add to, oh, add to 8. Yes, that's right. Factors of 12 that add to 8. And so if you know your factoring, you can factor this to be, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on factoring here because Factoring was our last lesson. So x minus 6, x minus 2 equals 0. So if you're like confused, how the heck did Mr. Lou come up with this? Well, you need to go back and watch lessons on factoring so that you can get that down. And once we get to here, it's really quite easy to see the answers. So if, if I look at this, sort of cover up this part and just look at the x minus 6, well, what would I have x to be to be 0 here? Well, x would have to equal 6. And then comma, what would have x have to be here to make this 0? Well, it would be 2. And these would be both positive because plus 6 minus 6 would be 0 or 2 plus or 2 minus 2 would be 0. OK, so they're pretty straightforward. So those are the two possible answers. When I put 6 in here, it will be 0. This will be 4. 6 minus 2 will be 4, but it won't matter because 4 times 0 will be 0. And when I put 2 in here, 2 minus 2 will be 0. But when I put 2 in over here, this will be minus 4, but minus 4 times two, 0 will still be 0. So these are my two answers, okay? And I often put a box around my answers when I get them. I like that. It just makes life easier for the, the teacher when they're marking. Okay, so let's go to another question. And this time what we've done is I have not made the equation straight up equal to zero. So we have to actually do that. We have to actually move the 20 over to the other side or get rid of it here. So I've subtract 20 here and I'll subtract 20 here because I like to always remember when I'm dealing with equations, which is what we are, whatever I do to one side, I do the same to the other. 
That's a general rule that always applies. So now I end up with x minus uh, x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. Okay, and that's sort of just basic rearrangement of an equation. Now I ask myself to factor this. So factors of 20 that have a difference of 8, and they are 10 and 2. The 10 will be negative, so it'll be x minus 10 and x plus 2 equals 0. And now I can see my answers here fairly easily. Here, in order for this to be 0, has to be 10. In order for this to be 0, minus 2. And so those are my two answers right there. I'll draw a box around them, okay? Again, remember, I have to make this 0, so the positive 10. I have to make this 0, negative 2, okay? Then I'm going to go to another one over here. Again, it isn't set equal to zero, so I want to set it to zero. Now, I could move the eight over this side, but generally speaking, we kind of like to keep everything over to the left side with the zero on the right side. It doesn't have to be that way, but it ends up being x squared minus 22x minus 21 equals zero, okay? If I ended up with a minus out in front, I'd have to multiply everything by minus one and get it to a positive. You must factor with a positive in the beginning anyway. I'd use the T method here. I've already done that, so I'm not going to go into the details of the T method a lot. I will, well, I'll show you if you wish. I think it works out to four and two and three and three. And what you get here is you get, what is it? Uh, three and seven. I apologize. Three and seven. And this ends up being 28. And this ends up being 6, so this is minus and plus. And so this factors out to be, <clears throat> what is it, 4x plus 3 times 2x minus 7, okay? Now, this is a little trickier because now my answers are not so obvious. I need to know when this equals 0 or this equals 0 because that's what will satisfy my equation, okay? So I have to set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. And generally speaking, in math, we do it like this. We say 4x plus 3 equals 0, or we say 2x minus 7 equals 0. And now I'm going to solve each of these two equations, okay? So in this case, the 3 will come over to the other side. That'll give me 4x equals minus 3. And then in the end, I get x equals minus 3 over 4. And that's how I write it. I don't generally change it away from a fraction form. I'll get a lot of kids who will write it as 0 0.75 and whatnot, but I really don't want that, okay? And I, I would prefer it left as a fraction, okay? Then we write or over here, and it's the same thing. The 7 is going to come over to the other side. It'll be positive. I'll have 2x here, and then I'll get x equals 7 over 2. And again, that is an acceptable answer. I'll get a bunch of kids who will write 3 and a half, which is perfectly fine because it's still fraction, or they'll even write 3.5. And again, it's not wrong. It's just that we don't generally write it that way. We just leave it this way. In fact, the answer might be written as x equals minus 3 over 4, comma, 7 over 2. And the really bright kids will actually figure out how to get straight from here to here, even from here all the way from here down to this answer and skip all of this work here, which is perfectly acceptable. They'll be able to look at this and go, oh, the three's going over becomes negative, divide by four, so that's gonna be negative three over four, and they'll have that answer. They'll look at the two X minus seven and they'll say the seven goes over becomes positive, divided by two, seven over two, and they're all done, okay? All right, let's move on and do a couple more just to throw a few more tricks or, or, or changes at you. Okay, once again, we're not set equal to zero, so we have to do that. So we write 5x squared plus 5x minus 10 equals zero. And then what I notice is that I have a common five that can be factored out all of these. Now, you could go ahead and factor it like this, make your T-box and go that way. But if you have a common factor, it's to your benefit to common factor it out. So five is a common factor here. So I can get this answer here 
And then I can factor this, factors of two that have a difference of one or two and one. So it ends up being x uh, minus two, oh no, plus two, I apologize, and x minus one equals zero. So the positive number has to be larger, they have to be different signs, and they have to multiply for two, and they add together to give me plus one. Now, I don't even need to worry about the five here out front because now it's just basically three numbers that are multiplying, five times another number times another number. So I can see my answers here pretty quickly. This answer here is going to be minus two because I want it to be zero. In order for it to be zero, it has to be minus two plus two. So minus two is one answer. And over here, it's going to be plus one. And you don't have to write the plus in front, but it never hurts to do it. It's not, you know, a, a, a huge error to write that. So all done. Minus two and one are the two answers that will satisfy the equation. Then, uh, we go back to this last question here. Now, if you're really good and you recognize fairly quickly that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square, you might say, well, that's two and three. And if I multiply them, that's six. And when I multiply them together and double it, I get 12. So I have a perfect square, which is 2x plus three squared equals zero. And this is really handy because now I just have to look at how do I make this be zero? Essentially, this really means 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 equal to zero. But I don't need to write this line out here. That would just be a lot of waste of time. I just simply need to look at 2x plus 3 and say what answer would have to go in here to make this zero. And if you're really good, students, some students are really good. They can see this. They go 3 will go over to the other side, become minus and divide by two, so it's gonna be minus three over two, and they can just write the answer, x equals minus three over two. And there is only one correct answer here, and they box it and they'd be done. For those who don't know how I did that, well, it's really simple. I go two x plus three equals zero, or two x plus three equals zero, which I'm not gonna write out twice because I don't need to do that, okay? It's just one of them, because since they're exactly the same, then it would be two x, equals minus three when the three comes to the other side. And then I divide both sides by two and X equals minus three over two. And there's my answer right there, okay? That is how it would work. So that is solving equations by factoring. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there's only one way to really get good at that and that's practice. And if you haven't got your factoring skills down on the last uh, quest that we did or quiz that you, we did and you're struggling with factoring, now's the time to really polish up and get your, your factoring skills down, get them really well polished so that you can use it to solve equations. This won't be the last time we look at factoring. There's other times we, we, we use factoring in other ways. So, you know, use this opportunity to really perfect your factoring skills. All right, we'll see you on Lutu next time.